Today's book is called Andrew Henry's Meadow, written and illustrated by Doris Byrne. To most everyone, Andrew Henry Thatcher's enthusiasm for building things was a nuisance. Even the helicopter in the kitchen and the merry-go-round hitched to the sewing machine seemed to get in the way. So one day, Andrew Henry quietly packed and moved, packed up his things and moved them to the meadow. Before long, Alice Burdock, who liked the birds, turned up. Her father didn't care for birds. Then George Turner came along with his boats and a paddle wheel and soon six other children. How Henry aroused the whole town and accidentally found a happy solution to his problem is captivating a captivating story, almost more absorbing than the detailed drawings of his ingenious, quite buildable inventions. <laughs> Sorry. Doris Byrne's writing skill matches her talent as an artist, combining a delicious understanding of childish longings and a gift for the comical understatement. She creates a picture book sure to become a dog-eared favorite of both parents and children. And I would say that has to be true. This is Uncle Bruce's favorite. 1965 is the copyright date. Let's see if we can get some more sunlight into the book. Okay. There we go. Now it's gotten dark again. Okay, perfect. Until that spring, Andrew Henry Thatcher lived with his family in the town of Stubbsville. He and his father and mother and two older sisters named Marion and Martha. The two girls were always with each other. They also had two younger brothers, Robert and Ronald. They were always with each other too. Andrew Henry was in the middle. He was always by himself, yet he did not mind. He had plenty of things to do. Mrs. Thatcher was usually busy in the kitchen, but Mr. Thatcher was tired when he came home from work. He liked to read the paper and have things quiet. Marion and Martha liked to sew or try new ways to wear their hair. Robert and Ronald liked to play with toy cars and coloring books. Can you see Robert and Ronald over here, mother in the kitchen? Andrew, Andrew Henry, it looks like he has a hammer and a saw and a board. Here's the two sisters and there's father. You can bring the book in a little bit closer. But Andrew Henry liked to build things. Mrs. Thatcher was unhappy when Andrew Henry built a helicopter in the kitchen. The helicopter had many fine features. Nevertheless, she said to him firmly, Andrew Henry, I have work to do. You must take that thing out of the kitchen. Look at that helicopter. That is incredible. Andrew Henry built an eagle's cage in the living room, and Mr. Thatcher was annoyed. It was a fine eagle's cage. An eagle would have liked it, but Mr. Thatcher didn't. He told Andrew Henry to go outside and take the eagle cage with him. When Marion and Martha saw the merry-go-round that Andrew Henry had hitched up to the sewing machine, they were upset. It went around nicely, too. But they told him to unhitch it and do it right now. Robert and Ronald didn't even like the system of pulleys that Andrew Henry rigged up in their room. Although it could close the door, fetch the crayon box, and lift the table one and a half feet off the floor, they cried. You're always spoiling all of our fun. Andrew Henry, leave us alone. Oh my, poor Andrew. Andrew Henry thought about it more and more. One fine spring morning, 
he made up his mind to quietly gather, sorry, his tools. He packed his hammer and his saw, his pocket knife and pliers, his big sack of nails, some bolts and nuts and wire, and even a few lengths of stovepipe. I'll build a house for myself, he said to himself. He, <laughs> hang on a minute. was my Andrew Henry on the phone asking what was for dinner and which I haven't started making because I'm reading a book but that's the way it is when you read books in real life so we'll just let it ride okay I'll build a house for myself he said to himself he went out the back door and down the path he knew where he was going no one saw Andrew Henry leave, except Thatcher's dog, Sam. The Thatcher's dog, Sam. As usual, Sam started to follow Andrew, Hen Andrew Henry, but this time Andrew Henry told him firmly that he must stay home. Sam was a good dog, so he sat down by the gate in the shade of the lilac bush and watched until Andrew Henry was out of sight. Do you know the... Andrew and Andy are hard to say when you're reading a book. Hmm. Okay. That's one good dog. Andrew Henry walked kitty corner through Burdock's pasture and climbed up over Blackbriar Hill. Blackbriar. Then he went out across Warzipski's swamp and through the deep woods. I love the pictures. There's all sorts of sorts of creatures looking from here and there. Finally, he came to a meadow, a stream wandering through the meadow, sparkling in the sunlight. On one side was a tall fir tree, straight and strong. Andrew Henry walked right over to the fir tree. He dropped his tools beside it, and he looked the ground over. Here is where I will build my house, he said to himself. He set to work, and before long his house was finished. The walls were made of clay and rocks and poles. The roof was made of fir boughs, and outside one window there was a fine landing field for dragonflies. But Andrew Henry wasn't alone for long. Soon Alice Burdock stepped out from the deep woods. She had her bird things with her. Mr. Burdock, who was a farmer, didn't care for birds. They ate his cherries and scratched up his corn and nested in his barn. He put scarecrows in the cornfield and tied tin cans in the cherry trees to scare away the birds. He even kept four cats in the barn to discourage the swallows from nesting in there. But Alice liked birds. She had brought along what she could. Andrew Andrew Henry, will you build me a house too? She asked. Sure thing, Andrew said. It was a nice house, especially for a person who liked birds. A ladder climbed straight up the trunk of an old tree to the house. There was plenty of bird baths and feeding stations. There were even bird houses and a balcony for watching birds. Even a handy rest for Alice's binoculars when she wasn't using them. Next out of the deep woods came George Turner. He had most of his boats, all of his fishing poles, and a big paddle wheel. Mr. Turner didn't like him to use these things in the bathtub. George wanted Andrew Henry to build him a house too. Sure thing, Andrew said. First they built a bridge over the creek, then they built the house on the bridge 
so that George could be near the water. The house had docks for the boats and built-in fishing poles and paddle wheel that worked a fan to keep George cool. It was surprising how much power that paddle, paddle wheel had. Then Joe Pulaski arrived. They built him a dugout house. The door was on the roof and the chimney stuck out of the ground. Joe wanted an underground house so that his pets would be comfortable. He had gray mice and white mice, a pet mole, and a pair of brown rabbits. The house had rooms and passageways for his pets. The mole's passageways were wonderfully misleading. Can you see them? That's not a tree, that's a... That's mole passageways up to the ground where you can see the plants growing and here's the door and a vent and a stovepipe. Jane O'Malley and Margot Laporte showed up next. Andrew Henry built Jane a house that looked like a castle with turrets. They dug a ditch around it, which filled up with water from the creek. The ditch made a useful moat, especially when the drawbridge was up. How exciting. Jane had her dress-up clothes with her. She helped her mother. She hoped her mother wouldn't miss them too much. She explained that they made her feel like a lady, Lady Jane, instead of just plain Jane. Margot's house was tall in the middle, like a teepee, but it had a long, low entrance, like an igloo. She needed privacy for her music. Visitors had to crawl on their stomachs. They also had to give three toots on a horn that she had hung beside the door. Sometimes Margot didn't answer because she couldn't always hear the horn when she was practicing. Down the hill across the swamp and into the woods came three more children. Sarah Lerner had a cookie sheet full of mud cakes, but her mother had her take them out of the oven. Don Peterson had a dresser full of dandelion seeds he had been saving to use for parachutes. Stanley Hayes had two racing toads his father wouldn't let him keep in the basement. Soon nine houses stood in the meadow. It looked like a small village. But in, in Stubbsville, the Thatchers were looking for Andrew Henry. The Burdocks were looking for Alice. Soon the Turners and the Pulaskis and the O'Malleys and the Laportes and the Learners and the Petersons and the Hayes all began looking for their missing children. Four days and four nights, everyone searched frantically. They hunted the fields and the barns and the buildings and the vacant lots, but the children could not be found. Now that would be an awful thing. But this is just a storybook, okay? That would be just an awful thing. Back to our story. The only one who wasn't searching was Thatcher's dog, Sam. He sat quietly under the lilac bush by the gate. Sam was a good dog, but he was also very lonesome. He gazed sorrowfully out towards the far corner of Burdock's pasture. The lonesomeness in Sam grew and grew, and finally it grew too big for even a good dog. One morning of the fifth day, on the morning of the fifth day, Sam raised his head and poured out a long, aching howl. He sprang to his feet and raced for the corner of Burdock's pasture. The townspeople all heard the howl and saw Sam racing off with his nose to the ground. The dog has found their trail. Follow Sam. Hooray for Sam! Sam ran kitty corner through Burdock's pasture. The fathers and the mothers and the sisters and the brothers and even the cats and dogs of the missing children all ran kitty corner after him. They climbed over Blackbriar Hill and went across Warzipski's swamp and in through the deep woods until they came to a meadow. It was Andrew Henry's meadow. And there were all the children. What excitement! The nine children, their parents, and all their sisters and brothers 
met with shouts of joy. They laughed and hugged each other. The fathers and mothers were too happy to scold or to ask any questions. The children were safe. Andrew Henry and his friends were happy too. They had been away from home four long days and four long nights. The village in the meadow had been wonderful. They would not forget it. But they missed their mothers and fathers and their sisters and their brothers and their cats and their dogs and they were ready to go home. The Thatchers gave Andrew Henry a corner of the basement behind the furnace just to build things. He built a roller coaster for Robert and Ronald's toy cars by using a bucket and parts of an electric fan. He made a hair dryer for Marion and Martha. The pipe he made the pipe filler he made for his father worked the same way as the bird feeder do as a bird feeder does. I'm sorry. And he especially was proud of the automatic table setter he made for his mother. Although it did take up a lot of room, Andrew Henry was pleased to have such a fine place to work. And his family was always curious to see what Andrew Henry would build next. The end. I love that book. It reminds me of another book called Rocks of Boxen, which I will post a picture of on my Facebook page. It's um, that one is still in print. So um, where the children all got together and made a town, um, and then it also reminded me of another book. trying to think here. Well, I forgot what that other book is. Oh, I know. The other book it reminded me of, which is also still in print, and I'll put pictures if I haven't already on my Facebook page, is Mike Mulligan and Steam Shovel, because Mike Mulligan ended up uh, in the basement and the pictures were much like this. We love these pictures of just pen and ink. That's just somebody drawing with a pencil or a pen. Um, so they use the white space and the dark space. So my challenge and activity today is, is there junk around your house that you can build things like pulleys and raceways, um, roller coasters for cars and automatic bird feeders? Um, I loved some of their clever ideas. You can even build with building blocks or Legos and Duplos. Um, another thing you can do if you just don't feel like building a huge thing, if you wanna invent something but not really move away from one space, you could try your hand at some of the pen and ink drawings like is in here. All right, thank you for spending time listening to Andrew Henry's Meadow, Uncle Bruce's favorite book.